Hello, this is Sarek with Coengineer. In this video, I want to go over fixtures and best practices. So, first of all, I want to make sure that you that it's clear that what we'll cover in this video is going to be applicable to any license for simulation, including the static studies that come with uh, SolarWorks Premium. Uh, first, I want to talk about the six degrees of freedom concept that is very important to understand in regards to uh, fixing your parts. What we're going to do is uh, go over this very flimsy plastic chair and to see what the stresses are on it, depending on the fixtures that we decide to use. Then we'll cover f basic fixtures and advanced fixtures. So in any FEA application, any model that you're about to run has to be discretized into a whole bunch of segments. In the case of SolarWorks, it's tetrahedrons. Um, these are called elements, and the points in which all those tetrahedrons connect are called nodes. Uh, this discretization is necessary to be able to actually run um, FEA, the FEA stress equations through the entire part. Now what's important to understand is when you have a, a CAT model meshed, all of those nodes are actually what need to be uh, constrained in the six degrees of freedom three translational and three rotational. If you were to be using a high-end uh, simulation application like Abacus, you actually have the granular control of being able to select each individual node uh, or element phase to be able to selectively choose what translational uh, degrees of freedom to lock. Now, you do have to be careful about selecting all of the nodes that are relevant to your study or you'll get weird results. You also have the granular control of constraining rotational degrees of freedom. And if you end up doing such a thing, well, you've essentially fixed that entire phase. Now in SolarWorks, uh, we use the fixed fixture. Now instead of having the granular control of node selection in a mesh, SolarWorks allows you to select the phase, recognizes every node that is part of the phase, and then adds the degrees of freedom constraints depending on the fixture that you use. Let's say in this case, we use a fixed fixture. That means that all six degrees of freedom are locked. Now we have three basic fixtures, fixed roller slider and fixed hinge. Fixed actually removes all degrees of freedom on the part, or on the selection. Roller hinge only allows degrees of freedom translationally on the directions that are that are sitting on the plane for the face that you've selected. Fixed hinge locks translational degrees of freedom and only allows one rotational degree of freedom around the, the axis uh, for the cylindrical face that you selected. Now we do have more granular control in the advanced fixtures. We have symmetry, cyclic symmetry, flat face, cylindrical face, and spherical faces. Each one of them controls different translational and rotational degrees of freedom. Symmetry, uh, planar symmetry and cyclic symmetry are a bit special because they allow this, the solver to know that there's more mass on the opposite side. Uh, but they essentially control the same degrees of freedom as flat phase and cylindrical phase. In flat phase, you can independently choose which direction in the X, Y, and Z to lock the, move, the movement of that phase to. Cylindrical allows you to control the independent rotational degrees of freedom. And spherical is a combination of radial and rotational degrees of freedom. But out of all these, the most powerful and nuanced is the reference geometry. You can essentially try to recreate all of the other fixtures with this one. One of the biggest benefits is the fact that you can choose vertices, edges, and faces. And depending on the reference geometry, like in this example, the top plane, you'll be able to control either translational or rotational degrees of freedom. In this case, by selecting a plane, you can control translational uh, directions. If you select an axis or cylindrical face, you'll have more control over rotational degrees of freedom. And if you select an edge, you'll be able to control displacement along the direction of that edge. So, how does this apply to fixturing your parts correctly? Well, let's go ahead and take a look. So here I have the model of the chair. 
And the study setup is pretty simple. I ended up using a fixed face on the bottom of these legs and then putting a force on the top of the chair where the weight would go, the weight of the person of 220 pounds. Now, if I look at my stress, I see that I only find a stress of three of 6.3 uh, megapascals when the yield strength is 35. So we might claim this a victory and say that the chair is good enough and walk away. Well, unfortunately, the fixed fixture is preventing these faces to actually translate on the X and Z directions. So I am adding some fake stiffness to this part. So to take into account what's occurring most likely, I want those feet to be able to slide out if they need to. So in my next study, called flat face, instead of using fixed, I've utilized the flat face, the flat face fixture. I select the flat face, chose the same faces, but now in my direction for translation, I chose to only move a displacement of zero, essentially lock the motion, normal to the selections themselves. Due to this, this chair is not going to be able to move up and down, but each one of the legs are going to be able to independently move in, inwards and outwards. This is going to give me a better representation of what will happen once I put that 224 on top. When we look at the stresses, we actually see a maximum of 19 megapascals instead of the 6 that we saw previously with, fixed, uh, with the fixed feet. Now, if we look at the displacement, we'll see that it, this thing is moving 161 meters. The reason for that is because the fact that the flat face has fixed it allows it to move around means that we're not really well constrained. This part is doing all sorts of things. It's flying out in the middle of nothing. So what I'll do, uh, first of all, I, I want to show you that if you select roller slider, we actually get the same results. Essentially, depending on, depending on the combinations that you select on fixtures, you could essentially have the exact same results. We look at the stress, still 19 megapascals. We look at the displacement, still 161 meters. Same result, different fixture. To be able to, to be able to actually constrain this part better, I want some node to actually stay in place to not to prevent the whole thing to fly out. For that, I use reference geometry. I use the split line fixture to create a cross and then project it onto that uh, surface where the pressure is going to go. I select the vertex where all those connect and then I can independently control the degrees of freedom that are occurring by telling it to not move as you can see in those green arrows in a preview. I'm telling it not to move in the x direction nor a z direction by telling it to move a distance of zero. So what now happens is this chair doesn't fly out into the nothing. My stresses, 19 megapascals, are still the same, but my displacement is now only 131 millimeters. Now, I do see a little, something a little odd. The back of the chair is actually uh, displacing asymmetrically from the other side. If I look at this from the front, it'll be evident that the reason for that is because that node where I added my reference geometry is fixed in place translationally. I did not control the rotational degrees of freedom. And so this part is free to rotate around that node as well as allowing the legs to move around. So to be able to stabilize this a little more, I created another configuration, or sorry, another study where I selected another reference geometry point. I could have done this with a, separate, with a separate fixture, but in this case, the both of them would have to be restrained the same way, so I just added it here. Now that this point in the front will also not be able to move in the X and Z direction translationally, but those two are free to move rotationally. But by locking two points in a line, I am no longer allowing this to, to rotate around the Y axis. Meanwhile, the on flat faces fixture on the feet do not allow it to go further down, but allow it to deform outwards to really see a more accurate representation of the deformation of the part. I also added another split line to be able to represent where the actual weight of the person would go on the chair. And when we look at the stresses, I can see that I now have 
27 megapascals when the yield strength is 35. So by using the fixed fixture, we saw 6 megapascals as a maximum of, as a maximum uh, stress. With this uh, more appropriate fixturing, we're seeing 27 megapascals. That's a significant increase in stress. We're still well within the yield strength of the material, but now we're now it's very clear that fixturing is actually quite important in your results. Let's go back to the slide. So hopefully uh, this has put a bit more light on the definition of the six degrees of freedom on every node in your study. Uh, we covered basic fixtures, advanced fixtures, and um, well, let us know if you have any further questions, and and please don't shy away from using using differing fixturing in your study to make sure you understand what's really happening in that model. This has been Eric Vega. Thanks for watching.